to do it. We will need a set of um, oil pastels, um, paper that is either on the, it could be watercolor paper, it can be a medium heavy paper. If you don't have um, such, you can use regular um, printer paper and that should be okay too. We need a pencil to, to make a sketch, a eraser just in case when there will be such a need and a little bit um, a, a small piece of paper towel as well as um, our sketch and I prepared it already in advance I think that we can work on a landscape painting or drawing today so this is my sketch and, and I wanted to include here mountains um, sky with clouds as well as with the river on the ground and um, some uh, nice ground. Uh, later on we can decide if we will um, also add some trees or not. Now what we want to do, we want to also apply, so uh, again I'm putting this paper on the side and that will be my reference. Now um, what I want us to do, I want us to apply so-called scraffito technique. That means that we will layer uh, the oil uh, pastels uh, one on the top of another and then by scratching we will achieve the effect uh, that we will have two colors in one spot, okay? So for that purpose, you can use um, your pencil if you want to, or um, you can use a sharp tool. And for that purpose, I have here, hmm, I don't know, this is probably <laughs> the, the destroyed brush, just the tip of it. Um, I'm sorry, the handle. Now, let us start. So. I'm moving my stuff, so I'm moving my sketch, I'm a right-handed person, so my sketch goes on the left side um, and uh, I start with the horizon line. This is a very important part because your horizon line will decide the depth of the field here, right? How much of the ground you will see or how important the sky will be. So what I will be doing here, I probably place the line here, a little bit higher than the half. Um, in the classical approach, you usually have one third from this for the sky left and two thirds for the ground or the reverse way. I'm just going a little bit above the half. So this is my line. It's horizontal, of course. And now I want I will start with the river. I don't want to have a river in the center. I want to place it a little bit on the side. And to make it really like to create the depth of space, I want to create kind of S letter, I call it, right? Or is it that's called S letter. So I'm going like this with one side. Make sure that you don't have heavy, heavy lines, okay? So don't press the pencil very hard. It's very, very skinny over there, right? So the river can be very wide, but it's very skinny or over there, far away from us, right? So you see here will be the river moving. You see how wide it becomes here next to us um, and very, very, very tiny, very narrow over there. Now, I will place one mountain here. See, starting here and maybe I'll go like this. Remember, mountains can't be just um, one peak. It's OK to create triangles when you are a little kid. But at this stage, you should already think about getting those jigsaw like lines. Now, I'll place another mountain here. Remember, check chuck 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 right maybe this is a little bit too sharp so i just change it tiny bit uh, and then maybe i should even go here a little bit more like this okay so you see that if you have those lines that's okay now i place another one here and should i put another one here you know what maybe another one this will be another mountain here and i will leave no actually i can leave it the way or maybe maybe another one will come here good so we have lots of mountains or maybe I can connect and make from this one mountain and then I make another one here. You see that that probably will be even better. So lots of lots of mountains. Now I want to have clouds on the sky and why I want to have clouds. Well, I want to create a better depth. I really want our eyes to zoom to this point and create the feeling that you really, really have to go far, far, far away, right? To reach this point here. So I've done it already with the river. You see our eyes are going this way, following the river. So it really takes us time to reach this point. And so will be with the clouds. So that the biggest cloud will be on the top, almost like crossing the, um, the uh, paper. Now, the other one, a little bit smaller than this one here, will come here. OK, 
Okay, so this one could be even bigger. Now, smaller one will come here because it's a little bit lower than this one here. Like you see, somewhere here. And then I make a really small one here. And then even smaller one here. See? And this way I will create the depth of space. Really nice one. So that's the trick that you have to use. So you see here, maybe I would still simplify. I think it's a little bit too complex. So as an artist, I can do it because I'm the boss, right? So you see, I have all those beautiful mountains here. And now it's time for me to apply first layer of paint that will go underneath. So I'm deciding that for the water and for the sky, I want to have this flesh color here okay so i'm going here like this you see i'm going here with the color and i also allow myself to go on the clouds okay here that will be my sky and i'm very careful next to the edges of the other parts of my drawing so for example here i want to really make sure that i don't go with this color on the top don't smudge this color on the mountains i want to have it only there where i will have blue color applied later on the top because i want to have a sky that looks like a sky right and the sky is blue sometimes sometimes just in the early and late hours when the sun rises then we can see the colors changing from the blue towards the yellowish, reddish, orangey. But it doesn't last for too long, okay? So we can leave this white color here, but I like to also go on the white. Maybe I leave it here, just a little bit here. Otherwise, I want to leave it here like this with some of the color. Okay, good. So this part is done. And you know what? Since the water, since the water is blue as well, greenish bluish, so I also want to have this color here. Okay, applied. So I'm going here as well. Whoop, a little bit extended my color here. Good, so this will be my river. And um, again, I try to cover the entire surface of the shape because I don't want this white to pick up through when I will scratch onto the blue pastel layer. Okay, so here we are. Now, the another step that I want to have, I want to think also about the mountains. And to be honest with you, hmm, I'm thinking if I should use a little bit of yellow color, well, maybe, maybe I use a little bit of this color here. So you see, I use this um, yellow ochre color just on the mountains here. Okay. Just tiny, 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 tiny bit. See, that will look really, really good. Okay. Uh, if you want to, you can also distribute it by using the, by using the um, fingers, just smudging. You just need a little bit of it here. You see, this should be okay. Right, like you see, good. A little bit of it here, a little bit there. Okay, and it's really fun to work this way. I really like it. See, there will be the another mountain, the peak here. So I'm going here nicely with the pastel. Yeah, and I, I have to um, admit that I really like to work with oil pastels. And uh, the reason for it is that I'm an oil painter. When you think about painters, we, we say about um, artists, we divide the artists into most or less um, two groups of the artists who like to use um, oils or oil paints and the one who like to use acrylic paint. Of course, we have also artists who work with watercolors and tempera paint and so on, but I would divide them majority of those two groups into those two groups, right? So I work with both, however, however, I prepare oil. So for me, working with pastels, it's really, really fun. Okay, so we have our mountains and we say, Madame, okay, why the mountains are yellow or mustard color? Well, you will see, we want this color to pick up true. 
through the gray color that we will apply on the top. Okay, now we need to have ground here. Um, and on the ground, we will apply later on a green color. However, I want to have some yellow here first, okay? So when we will scratch into it, we will see this beautiful yellow picking up through. That, of course, will affect how our green color will look like. Okay, so here you see one section is already done. Then we need to have the other side. So I'm taking my sketch on the side here and then I'm going here. I'm going, 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 almost, almost done. I mean the base, right? So that I will call it the phase one of our drawing. So I still have to finish this part here and really have to press nicely my pastel because this is such a light color. And again, I don't want to see white spots later on. So again, just to check if I covered everything, every little section. You see here, this is done, good. We have this part here, good. I just make sure with my finger that I will spread it nicely right here and there. I also will, with the piece of paper towel, I will clean up everything what I don't need to have here. Ooh, so all the rests unnecessary, some particles left. Fantastic. So you see here we have our base and it doesn't differ very much from our sketch. Now the next step that you need to have is um, the green. And now we'll go on maybe, let's see, maybe we'll start with the sky. So I'm applying now the blue color on the sky. You see, I simply go on the top of this lovely color, flesh color that we have here, and I'm covering it. I don't press it very hard. I just want to make sure that it nicely covers, that my pastel, blue pastel, nicely covers the flesh color. Okay, so here we are. Oh, oh not on the mountains. Madame, okay, what are you doing? Be careful. You see here, I leave the cloud here. Very, very small cloud. Okay, here I can ask on this stage, when I don't like the shape of one of the peaks of my mountains, I certainly can change them. The same with the, uh, with the clouds, you see? I try to keep um, my stroke directions um, horizontal, because that more or less indicates the sky. You can also use cross hatching, but I think in this case, it will be easier to just create those uh, horizontal lines you see how nicely it is covered and we still have in some places the color peaks through and this is good because when you talk about complementary color effect we know that the orange and blue colors create the complementary contrast so that means that each of those colors help each other to be stronger brighter right so in this case this can also work like kind of orangey color right so you see it, the, our blue becomes brighter oh la la almost done with the sky ay, 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 my pastel broke and that will happen often so when it happens just be prepared don't panic pick it up and apply it see so it's almost almost done the part of the sky see here good and we have a nice sky now. Good. So when I want to come, even on the clouds, you see, a little bit, I can, because in the clouds we will have also a little bit of this color. Sure. Now, what I want to do here, and I'll show you right away, when I want to scratch it, I can scratch into it and get a very nice effect here. See, and if I don't like something, I have white here. So again, I have to clean up my pastel and I can go on the top, you see, and make it a little bit stronger here and there. And I certainly can make it stronger on the top of the clouds, right? Because that will look good. Notice here I have a little bit extra blue pastel and I don't want to have it there. So I'm going here with the white. I'm going here with the white, a little bit here, a little bit here on the top, remember, on the top. So that looks quite good. Now, with the river. Uh, remember, water is always a little bit darker than the sky. 
that reflects in it. So I'm using, instead of using this light color that I used for the sky, I will be moving towards the darker blue. So this blue is coming here. See again, horizontal way of applying the strokes. See how good? Yeah. And then fast, 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 fast. So of course, not always I can go with horizontal um, strokes. But I try, like it's even when I apply the stroke here diagonally, in the diagonal, place them in the diagonal direction, I still go on the top later on and will try imitate, like you see, the horizontal placement of the blue. And why is it? Well, because water looks flat, right? So the strokes um, that imitate the flatness of the water will help us better understand that this is the water. So you use all those painterly or artistic tricks to convince the person who looks at your artwork that this is a real stuff. Okay, so here we are. And now I will show you what you can do to this river. Let's see, I can come on the top and scratch into it. And this beautiful, fleshy, kind of orangey color is coming through. I, we can go on the top. I'm not sure if we need so much uh, of this uh, contrast on the top, but somewhere from here, maybe with a couple of lines and a little bit more here. I can even make it a little bit deeper. See? Like this. And again, when you don't like something, you can simply go on the top again with the blue. You see how easy it is? So there is, I call it sure shot um, F, um, technique because then it's easy to fix anything what you don't like so when you want to emphasize certain parts more again you can come you can go back and forth with those scratchy lines right you see here maybe a little bit too much here so you see i'm taking it off here and i apply another layer here right so that's good now i have to really make sure that i don't have any any part any extra particles here now the mountains so what i do to the mountains i have my color here and this is the gray color. So I'm going here on the top of the mountains and I'm applying this color here on the top. So you see it's coming here and I'm going up, I'm covering the entire mountain with it. The same will be here. You still can see the color peeking through, right? And this is good because we want to have it. We still will use black color in some places, but not yet. Right now is just the gray color that is coming on the top of the of our mountains. So here we are. I like to use the phrase here we are. I hope that you don't mind. And definitely here. A little bit more here. You see almost almost done. Still, you see it's a little bit too warm as a color on this side here. So this this yellowish mustard the colors it's quite warm and i want to make sure that it just picks up in some places again a little bit of the smudge with the with our paper towel here you see how good now if i want to now use black i can certainly use black here when i have one month my one a peak overlapping another peak right so here i can a little bit more emphasize the shape you can see of the side of the mountain and then on the mountain that is in the back, not on the one in the front, the one in the back, I can make it a little bit darker, bringing a little bit of the black uh, pastel marks on the top. So you see, but make sure that you don't lose the sharp edges, okay? That's what it is. The mountains are not really very much rounded. Even when something can appear like this, it's still, it consists of many of those, those, those lights. Okay, so I want to have the same here. Maybe you see a little bit darker on the bottom here, right? There could be also a couple of trees on it. So we can decide later on, it will apply a tiny bit of, um, of green color. But you see here, I need to have it darker. I certainly need to have in this section to be darker. This mountain is very much in the back, right? Not super dark, but just the color has to change more towards this bit darker grayish color. Now notice what is happening here. Uh, the pastel sometimes moves the way that we have more pigments concentrated in one spot than another one, but that's okay. Again, don't panic, that's okay. 
you see so we have more mountains notice i make them i really emphasize just a little bit on one side see making them a little bit darker and really playing with this idea what is in the front what is in the back i want this mountain to be in the back so what i do here i'm just getting a little bit more of the black pastel just a little bit over there and emphasizing this edge right here okay so this is what we have slightly more of it still here right you see and look at this this doesn't look bad i really really like it you see here we have the mountain. I think this is a very long mountain, so I make it darker just on the bottom here. See here, just a tiny bit. So I have to, I have to make those decisions while working. Here, we see, still a little bit more. I think I can certainly be, make it darker. See, here. good. Bringing up, up, up. Okay, the strokes. You see, that looks quite nice. Now, the another thing that I need to have is um, I maybe place a little bit of green here on the mountains. And this is because you see on the bottom, we usually have some of the trees. So you see just the lines like this, okay? Not coming up to the top, absolutely not. Because if we want to have very tall mountains, like our Rocky Mountains, then you will make sure that this part is left without any trace of green okay so you see just a little bit like this choo 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 here you see and that looks good now we want to use green now uh, on the ground here in this yellow part because i think it's a little bit too yellow so what i want to do here i want to go with the green like this you see just a little bit just a little bit and that will look so nice, especially here, emphasizing the edge, you see? Then I'm coming here and make it darker. Ooh la la, you see, I'm going next to the river here. Oh, I got some brown paint here, which I didn't intend to have. So what I can do, I can use my scraffito technique, you see, and erase it. At the same time, I will look at my pastel, I'll check if it's clean, and then I'm going with my green see very good here a little bit more okay still i have to really make sure really make sure that i get the green here okay see nice oh la la good i can leave in some spots the yellow coming through actually i like it when it peeks through but the main color has to be the green one okay so at this time repeat the same on the other side just here oh la la and uh, we also have to decide where is the source of light? Where is our sun? Uh, what do you think? Which side should we emphasize here as a light? I think since this part seems to be lighter, let us assume that the sun is behind this cloud, right? So why I have to think about it? Well, the reason for it is that I have to put some shadows especially with the uh, on the river right like reflection from the ground and i show you in the second how to do it so again the first thing that you have to decide for is the position of the sun okay so you see here and how the sun reflects the light on the ground here good so here this one is nicely done you see and then what I want to have, I want to show you, um, oh, sorry, on the river. I can use this color here, but I think it could be a little bit too much of it. So I will maybe go for red here. You see, on this side here, since the light is coming from here, so let's see, this ground will create, a, this edge has to be a little bit darker. And remember, this edge is closer to us. This is barely there so here we don't put anything here you will be very very skinny almost like a line and here this part can be a little bit wider just a little bit you see what it does it creates nice depth in your water so here just a little bit and not to make it too strong i'm going with the blue again on the top to get kind of purplish color because in my set of old um, pastels i don't have purple color but again as an artist, I can always recreate it, since purple is a secondary color. It's a mixture of blue and red. So you see, this gives me a better effect here. 
Ooh la la, I really like cat hair like this. Ooh la la. Maybe even more, like you see here. We bring it onto the water. Look at this, right? So now I want to have some of the scratches done here on the mountains, especially here. You see, remember, sun is coming from here. So I want to make it a little bit lighter even here. Like you see, oh, ah, that will be good. You see here. Okay, I want to have the same, maybe there not so much, but here. Notice what I do. Just this side really lighter, okay? And I do want to have, this one is really light here. I want to bring it here. Maybe even, like you see, I can change even the shape of the mountains if I want to, right? Because I use scrapito technique. I scratch onto the ground and I'm going back to the color that I applied as the first one, which was this fleshy, orangey, very pale orangey, um, or we call it flesh color, right? So you see here, I can even apply, go here like this. I definitely need to scratch it here a little bit more, right? See, just like this, and I have really fun with it. Just makes me feel uh, good. Now, if I don't like certain parts, and I wanted to show you here, you see, I can gun on the top, you see, and apply still more of the pastel. So there's no such things that you can make mistake here. Absolutely not, okay? So let us go back here and get a little bit more of those beautiful scratchy lines you see for our mountains good so from there this mountain looks really like a triangle I, and i just talk about not to make triangles i change a little bit of the shape of it here i would even scratch it here because i really want to change it so you see easy peasy now from there i think i also want to maybe bring this mountain coming a little bit further here Okay, and I don't want to have it really wide, so I'm going here with a little bit of gray. Good. Now, I do the same here. So what I want to have here on the ground, um, I want to have some of the scratches, you see, like this. Okay, just a little bit to make it more interesting, especially in the front. Now, if you plan to put some plants here, like you see, I can certainly do it. You see, la la la, grass. And especially next to the water, right? Because they do. And you see, there will be a little bit of this reflection. The same here. Huh. Make sure that it's very, very small here. So probably you wouldn't see very much, you see. But coming closer to us, the grass can be taller. Or almost like bushes you can place here, you see. And then you can bring some of it here. See? And then a little bit more of it here. A little bit more here. And this and this and that so you see that's how we can using scrafito technique how we can create quite an interesting appealing to our senses um, uh, landscape okay so I hope that we all had fun here oh would you like the tree here well, well, maybe we'll just leave it for now okay just one more thing you see I can come with some other colors here as well see if I want to and that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this project and um, we will work on another one next time. Have a good day. Bye.